Perfect. So this is insights from interns. We've got two spring interns um, who interned at PwC. We have Rebecca, who studies at the University of Glasgow, and Ellie, who studies at the University of Cambridge. And I'll hand over to them so they can just quickly introduce themselves and give a little bit of background about them. Um, okay, so hi, I'm Rebecca. As um, Melissa just said, I study accounting and finance at the University of Glasgow. And in June, I completed PwC's Women in Business programme in the audit service line. Hello, I'm Ellie and I do geography at the University of Cambridge and I also completed the Women in Business um, programme with PwC in audit also. So first we're going to discuss the application process and we're going to start with the different stages. So if Rebecca, if you would mind giving us an overview of the stages please in the application. Perfect. So to begin with, you do an online application and this is just a simple online application where you're going to include your personal details, your education history and any work experience or anything like that. So this should probably take you about half an hour, not too, not too hard, just simply putting in personal details. From here, you're automatically processed onto the next stage, which is called Career Unlocked. And this is their online testing. Now, PwC's online testing is probably entirely different to any online test you'll have previously done. It's games based, not a typical numerical or typical verbal reasoning test that you might get elsewhere. So as it's games based, the real main way to prepare for this is actually using PwC's website and using any resources they have or any events they host around this, as this allows you to understand what's involved and what's being assessed. As well, during the games, it's just reacting with your kind of and being intuitive, intuitive and um, going with your first response because at the end of the day, that's probably going to be right. So if you pass this, it normally takes about two weeks or so, and then you get on to the careers unlocked, which is the video interview stage. So the video interview stage is split between some simple video interview questions and then also a case study question at the end. So the case study question is service line specific. Um, so if you apply to audit, you get a different one to someone that applies to consulting. And here you get around 10 minutes to prepare for it and then five minutes to present back, recording yourself in a video, as in, in a video interview. So for this, it's just important that you read the case study, you think about your responses and just be clear in answering it. Make sure you're comfortable speaking to a camera, make sure you're comfortable with your background and just really make sure you go into depth in the answering the questions because this is a very important stage of the application. As well, away from the case study, you've also got some generic video interview questions. So here it's just important to know about your motives for applying to PwC, motives for applying to that particular service line as well, and make sure you, you present these clearly in your answers. So for that, you get around two minutes to prepare and then three minutes to answer the question. And then if you pass this, the last stage to get on the Women in Business programme is the Assessment Centre, which is the virtual career focus day. So this is online and takes around four or five hours or so and really just has a variety of different tasks. So there's obviously an interview, there is group activities and also individual activities. And it's just important to be yourself throughout the whole process. So for the interview, just preparing, so researching PwC, researching their values, the service line, their clients, just having an overall grasp of the company and understanding why you want to work there is really important. And also in the group activities, again, it's just generic group stuff. Make sure you can work well on a team. You're not overpowering, you're communicating well, you're listening to others is super important. And then the individual tasks, there's a range of numerical questions and also some written questions. So just making sure you're comfortable with written questions, comfortable formatting, like formal writing, business emails, things like that is just super important. So that was just a quick overview, Ellie, if you want to go into more detail on anything, feel free. Um, no, I think that covered most of it. There's just one thing I want to say. It's like with the women in business um, program and also the black talent in, in business programs um, this year, they've changed the application process. So it's going to end after the career conversation. So if you're applying to graduate roles or um, summer internships after your second year, you still have to do the assessment day or the career focus day. But if you're just doing the first year schemes, you don't need to do that anymore. Perfect. Thank you. And to Ali now, what would you say made you successful with your application? 
Um, I think my main things were definitely being natural because the application process is centered on whether you're the right fit for PwC. So the best way for both parties, like you and the recruiter, um, to determine this is if you're yourself. I also think that preparation and research is really, really important, that you need to understand the business, um, their values. Um, PwC have a PwC professional framework, which is the thing that they assess you against when they like pick their candidates. So you need to be aware of that. And that's to do with um, whole leadership, business acumen, technical and digital global and inclusive and relationships and they're like the key headers within it and there's loads more information on that in their website if you want to go and have a look um, and then I also think it's so important to practice the different stages of the application process so Rebecca's already talked about the fact they've got an e-learn hub available um, online use that use the resources they've provided you with um, also before the career unlocked stage make sure you do do some numerical reasoning um, tests because there is one at the end of that um, and then also it's just like practicing talking to a camera because it's obviously a very unnatural setting. You're not used to it. So you just need to be aware of what it's going to be like. And also the best tip I was ever given is put your laptop on top of a few books because otherwise there's a massive temptation to look at yourself and the camera on your laptop is at the top of the screen. So if it's like elevated above you, you automatically look up into it, which most people are not very good at doing. So, yeah. That would be my tips for being successful. Rebecca, Rebecca is anything to add to that? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I think you've covered it. And just really making use of PwC's resources is the main thing. Like they're there to be used and they're there to help you. So don't be silly and don't not use them. If they have any sessions, which they did for the women in business, they had specific sessions on the assessment center, on the video interview, attend these because it's so valuable hearing from the recruiter what they're looking for and being able to ask questions as well to people that know firsthand is just super valuable. Amazing. So we'll go to Rebecca now and um, if you could just give an overview of what the three-day programme looks like, please. Sure. So this was a three-day paid programme that was held in June this year. What was really unique about PwC's programme is the fact that everyone's programme was different. It wasn't just a generic one that every single person followed and you just kind of sat there listening to talks. Everyone's was different. We all shadowed a different person, shadowed someone from different offices, things like that, depending on where you're based. So I shadowed someone working in the Aberdeen office. There was uh, me and two other uh, people on the programme shadowing her. So we had the opportunity to attend some of her team meetings. We um, listened to some of her talks with clients, um, just really just got a really good grasp of what her day-to-day -day task is. We also attended some training sessions on some new accounting standards, like amendments and things like that. And then she gave us some tasks that would be typical of an internal audit. So we did some research tasks for a company they were actually in the process of auditing. We um, did some research on their, connect, their industry, who their main competitors are, things like that, just generic research. But it was super interesting actually researching one of their clients. Um, so like I said, yeah, everyone's program's different. So Ellie, if you want to give an overview of what yours was like. Mine was very similar to that, but mine was in the Birmingham office um, and I was only with one other person, but also we shadowed um, their meetings, client meetings, um, also got given similar tasks in terms of research. But one thing I did that I don't know if you did, we went to the award ceremony. So at the end of the month, um, loads all PwC employees get like a certain amount, number of credits they can give to other members of their team like to recognize good work and we got to go to the award ceremony for that which was kind of interesting because it's something you wouldn't expect to get to do so that just shows that everyone's experience is unique. And for Ellie, what would you say the team responsibilities are on the internship of PwC? So I think I'll just start by saying what is audit, just in case anyone's not sure or is looking at other service lines. So it's an objective examination and evaluation of the financial statements of an organisation to make sure that the financial records are a fair and accurate representation of the transactions they claim to represent. So my team's responsibilities was to, as an auditor, was to provide high quality audits that basically serve the clients, serve public interest by promoting like trust and confidence in the business and like in more broadly capital markets. So audit is basically the building block of capital markets because it builds the transparency within it. So we use, well, the people I was working with use their knowledge, their skills, their experience to deliver high quality audits with independence, integrity, objectivity, and basic professional skepticism. 
um, to their clients. So their clients can be anything from families and small businesses to global scale corporations that you've heard of like HSBC, JP Morgan, et cetera. So there's a massive scope within it. So the responsibilities are obviously high to each individual client, but obviously when you're dealing with big names like that, the responsibilities are huge. Becca, anything you'd like to add to that? I think you covered it really well. The only thing I would say is that for the programme, obviously it's not just audit, they have deals, consulting, tech, legal, um, business services, I think as well. If, remind me if I've missed any, but there's so many different areas. So you're not just focused on audit if it's not what you want to do. And then to Rebecca now, how would you describe the word culture within your department when we go to LAF? Yeah, everyone I had the opportunity to speak to was super friendly. Obviously, we're sitting in some meetings and everyone introduced themselves and really just made you feel like you're part of the team. Like you didn't feel like you were an intruder listening in. You felt part of the team and part of the culture, which I thought was really good considering it was only a couple of day programme. So yeah, everyone was super welcoming and friendly and would definitely recommend it. Yeah, no, I agree completely. And I think also you sometimes I think going into these kind of things, you think, oh, I'm going to be like bamboozled by loads of jargon. I'm not going to understand what's going on. But actually, people have very normal conversations as well. And it's all like people want you to feel included and they want you to ask questions when you're stuck. So it is just such a nice environment to be in. Now, on to the dreadful topic of rejections, because we all have to deal with them. But Ellie, how did you handle rejections during the application stage? I think the first thing I would say is that you just have to persevere, like perseverance is essential. And at the end of the day, you only need one offer. So obviously, you're going to have some things that you're more interested in than others. But to get an internship, to get on any like a spring week equivalent, you just need one offer. And I think it's really important to remember that and not get bogged down by trying to get 40. Um, I also think you need to learn from rejection. So any feedback you're provided, I don't know if anyone's done any kind of um, of the tests or anything already, but you often get a report and your strengths, your weaknesses, and like a little bit of detail below them. Make sure you read that. But most importantly, make sure you act on it. Like agency is so important. So you need to follow the advice given to help it improve your performance in future application processes. And that's the best way to deal with it, in my opinion. Rebecca? Yeah, touching on that, just making sure that if there is a pattern of a certain stage you're getting rejected at, so if you're getting rejected at the online test every single time, that you really focus on that and practice that because online tests are so easy to fail if you're not prepared. So making sure you're prepared for every single one is so important because you're never going to get an interview without it. I think as well as just realizing that you're not alone. Like I know what it's like seeing on LinkedIn, everyone posting that they've got like 10, 20 different spring weeks or whatever. And you're really sitting there thinking what's going on? Like, why am I not good enough? But you're really not alone. Like People that are posting that have probably had like 10 or 20 rejections as well. Like you just need to realize that you're not alone and reach out to people in your network, perhaps your university societies, your university course, even just people on LinkedIn, because everyone's going through it together and getting in your head that you're not the only person getting rejected, I think is so important. So yeah, just making sure you're focusing on your weaknesses almost, but also reaching out and speaking to people, I think is super important. Thank you. And um, now I want to hear from both of you um, on what you thought your biggest challenge was during the entire internship. Uh, Ellie, we'll start with you. Um, well, in, the, in terms of the application of the internship, definitely the video interview, the career conversation, because as I've said already, that it's such an unnatural situation. You really do need to learn how to get good at them. It's not something you're just going to sit down and be a whiz at because as yeah it's just unnatural um and I've spoken about putting your laptop on books I swear by that honestly the minute I learned that I didn't get rejected from any video interviews before that I got rejected from a lot so um but in terms of the actual internship I just think it was more before I actually went like it was a daunting experience um not being sure what to expect but the minute I was in the situation it was actually really really good and as I've said already people want you to have a good time people want you to be included so you just have to remember that Rebecca? Yeah, I think during the actual internship, similar to what Ellie just said, I think as well, because you were work shadowing someone, at first for me, that was very daunting because all the other spring weeks that I had completed were you were kind of sitting in front of the camera, sitting in like the business's room, listening to people talk. You weren't actually like in a small group 
and work sh shadowing, completing tasks, you were all like in a big generic thing, like listening to talks and like the business. So I did find that quite daunting at first, but again, like Ellie said, very quickly settled in and really enjoyed it. Um, in terms of the application process, it's just balancing everything because it's so difficult balancing university studies, applications, I was working as well, and just making enough time for each thing that you can do, keep your university work high quality, keep going to your job and make your applications a good quality because at the end of the day, there's no point applying if you can't put time into it. So for me, the thing that really worked for this was just making sure that I spent maybe 10, 15 minutes a day on applications alone, nothing else, just applications whether that be practicing some numerical reasoning test, your research in a company, preparing for an interview, etc. Just putting aside a certain amount of time a day just to focus on that part really helped me with balancing everything. And before we wrap up for Q and A, I just want to start uh, finish by asking us both what piece of advice would you give to anyone applying for a finance internship at the minute? Uh, Ellie, we'll start with you. 100% just be yourself during the application process back yourself and you can do it but and you just have to accept rejection is part of it but if you're yourself you're far more likely to be successful because you'll find some a company that's right for you yeah mine's very similar just don't give up like you will get rejected it's difficult it's certainly very challenging and it will test you but just don't give up keep going and you will get there eventually and even if the internship you get is not 100% what you want to do with yourself. Take it and you can always go and change career paths further down the line because the most important thing is just getting an internship and getting a job. Amazing. Well, thank you both for that. And I'm going to open the session now for any questions if anyone has any. I'm going to take that silence as a no. And um, one thing that I do just want to let everyone know of is that we do have an upcoming event next Sunday. At the same time, it's 4 p.m. with um, our speaker, Jefferson Emmanuel. He is an investment bank and summer analyst at JP Morgan. So if you just scan the QR code on the right there, that'll take you to the webpage. You can sign up and get read much more details about that. And we also have a finance careers chat on WhatsApp, which can help individuals try and expand in the finance network. Uh, finance career sorry to grow their own network and obviously meet people who are similar to you going through these applications going through these rejections and just trying to do their bit but thank you both for that and um, I will now stop sharing my screen and just if there's anything else anyone would like to add no amazing that's perfect thanks oh, so yeah. much for your time tonight and I will oh, end the recording yeah I've lost that end of the recording <laughs> there we go